When someone mentions the word Jurassic, visualizations of enormous creatures surrounded by man-eating plants will soon follow. And this is for good reason, because during the era of the dinosaurs, enormous creatures could only survive with equally enormous food sources. Within the Black Hills of Dakota, petrified remains of these once enormous organisms can still be found. Presumably, they can also be discovered in many other parts of the world. Yet within the Black Hills, it seems the prehistoric remains have avoided the deluge of sediment, which has been experienced elsewhere, subsequently burying the evidence under several meters of earth. Petrified, enormous trees that, when alive, would have soared into the air, matching in height many of today's modern skyscrapers. Open to the public in 1929, an entire island, 50 by 100 miles in size, covered with the perfectly preserved petrified remains of a once gigantic forest. Trees of incredible and seemingly impossible sizes, destroyed by a cataclysm which made them collapse in unison. Now recognized as one of the largest outcroppings of fossilized petrified wood anywhere on the surface of the Earth, it is a rare natural insight into the enormity of Earth's ancient wildlife. Quote, here is just the beginning of an astounding photographic documentation of this petrified island, a little glimpse of an entirely unknown condition upon the Earth. It is a major historical discovery that, if embraced, will cause major upheaval within the science and religious communities," said Joseph C. Bennett from BeholdGiants.com. Scientists assume that the maximum height of a tree was 425 feet from the ground, at this height, the tree's ability to pump nutrients is supposedly overcome by gravity. However, Joseph, along with several other astute researchers, have discovered the remnants of ancient trees within the area, which would have had a circumference of over a half a mile. The Devil's Tower, coincidentally also within Dakota, has been argued for many years by many people to actually be that of a once enormous petrified tree. The formation of its rocky surface does indeed appear to be reminiscent of tree bark, yet many will argue against such a premise, or indeed the possibility, based on traditional rather than more modern and controversial understandings of the past capabilities of plant and animal life. Thankfully, as more research is undertaken and more become aware of these amazing places, the possibility becomes even more likely. Recently, an incredible story has been released by National Geographic. An enormous ancient metropolis found hidden beneath deep forests within Guatemala. Discovered using a combination of LIDAR mapping, drones, physical exploration, and other forms of radar, this lost city's disclosure, however, if given the publicity and understanding it deserves, brings with it some drastic, yet by some long-awaited realizations within academia the archaeological community, the educational curriculum, and many, many authors and their so-called accurate literature. For this city's population has been estimated to have not just been thousands, but actually went far into the millions. A civilization, or rather, incredibly ancient and so far complex city, would have rivaled even the most heavily populated areas of Earth even to this day. Such incredible numbers of people at such a time within our ancient history Successfully co-inhabiting and surviving in such a space demands incredible complexity and technological ability. A drastic relook at our currently taught understandings of history is undoubtedly required. Amazingly, this pre-Columbian civilization, hidden for untold millennia beneath the dense rainforests of Guatemala, is estimated by some to have peaked a mere 1200 years ago. Yet it is entirely possible, and much more likely, that this lost city is far, far older than this. An advanced, complex city landscape, which the most recent data suggests may have supported a population of up to 10 to 15 million people. This realized from new drone footage of the city, which spans an astonishing 2,100 square kilometers in size. The advanced infrastructure, which included advanced agricultural terracing, with elevated trade routes to prevent flooding in rainy seasons, not only has experts finally rethinking the dimensions and complexity of past empires, 
but it may be the linchpin needed in future realizations of a past civilization, a civilization which was far more enlightened than our current society. As such, upon their untimely demise, left little scars upon the earth. Little evidence of their existence, apart from their sophisticated structures, as such a lost city is discovered. As predicted, modern technology will ultimately bring an end to this worldwide suppression of what should be free-flowing information regarding what once was seen as controversial is now finally being seen as educational. And given that the newly announced Maya Megapolis is the result of only the first phase of Pakunam's LiDAR initiative, there are likely to be many more revelations about the mysterious people who built this massive urban network. Clearly an amazing discovery, one which could quite possibly be pre-Diluvian. We will keep you posted. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. On a number of occasions, we have covered the unexplainable remnants left by a civilization which once undoubtedly flourished here upon this planet. A true mysterious history. The most notable and presumably the evidence which will remain upon our Earth for the longest being the unimaginably enormous megalithic structures which rest in many areas of Earth. These structures built using stones so large, we cannot explain how they were moved. The quarry, known as Yang Shan, is such an impressive example of this lost knowledge and or technique for moving these stones, we felt it deserved an in-depth discussion. What is special about Yang Shan is the fact that it was seemingly abandoned, quite possibly due to cataclysm. In the midst of actually cutting some of the largest stone megaliths ever found on Earth, revealing in all its glory just how these stones were indeed detached from the Earth's bedrock, a question which had also remained unanswered for many years. Yang Shan also reveals invaluable clues to how they could have been moved. The star of the show, an enormous steel weighing 16,250 metric tons, disputed to have been cut during the reign of the Yongkou Emperor, the third ruler of the Ming Dynasty in China, reigning from 1402 to 1424. However, although academia is seemingly willing to approach such subjects with an air of arrogance, often due to its in-depth, accurate understanding of said era, it inevitably becomes unstuck once one begins to explore their knowledge or indeed explanation of how these enormous stones were intended to be moved. Academia's illogical explanation of the site is as follows. In 1405, the Yongle Emperor ordered the cutting of a giant statue in this quarry, for use in the Ming Xiaoling Mausoleum in dedication of his deceased father. Three separate pieces were being cut, the rectangular base, the body, and the head. After most of the stone cutting work had been done, the architects conveniently realized that moving stones from the quarry to Ming Xiaoling and installing them there would not be physically possible. The body weighed 8,799 tons, and the steel's apparent head weighed 6,118 tons. According to quote, experts, it would have stood 73 meters tall. A supposed legend attached to this possible fallacy has it that workers who failed to produce the daily quota of crushed rock of at least 33 shang would be executed on the spot. But is this the real story of Yang Shan Quarry? Or could there possibly be a more interesting history attached to this site, and indeed its accompanying stones? Within Baalbek, one of the countless examples found around the world, there are stones well over a thousand tons in weight, which seem to have been effortlessly placed atop one another, using technologies or methods unexplained by these so-called experts. Is it really that unthinkable to believe that they could indeed once shift these enormous stones found in Yangshan? Not only move them, but lift them on top of one another? Fortunately, more and more people are beginning to look at this exact possibility. And with the mounting evidence in support of far greater antiquity surfacing every day, it is only a matter of time before these sites are truly revealed for what they actually once were. There is a growing number of evidence being correlated worldwide every day, increasingly adding the pressure upon modern historical paradigms 
incredibly strong arguments for the chronology of man being vastly incorrect. Archaeological proofs that our history on this planet has not only been massively underestimated, but unfortunately, due to its doctrine for creation stimulating a large stream of wealth, individuals have become transfixed on this following's flow of financial backing, going to great lengths to protect these investments. This has resulted in a steadfast position by those in the upper echelons of historical, geological, even artistic academic circles. A seemingly immovable, so-called conclusion in regards to all developed, already printed, funded investigative current claims to all historical sites. Yet their ignorance to that which disproves said hypothesis, being their Achilles' heel as all near smoking gun evidence to the contrary of their claims, seemingly feared to be approached, we feel as they would lack the ability to disprove such data as accurate. With qualified persons in positions of trust, having their careers ruined for refusing to reject their own findings. The bearing straight being on example, the migratory land bridge theory crucial to these funded upheld theories timelines with man claimed to have entered Europe across it at a precise time in Earth's history, yet it now being a theory proven inaccurate in a number of areas, along with countless other examples exposing the true magnitude of this current historical deception. In our opinion, initially arising from the potential profit seen by some as a hybrid form of New World Religious Origin Theory. It has, however, now gained a complete monopoly over the curriculum giving supposed definitive explanatory claimed factual information about relics one simply could confidently convey unless undertaking in deception, as if attempting to create an illusion of all-knowing. This attitude of all-knowing add to this actively ignoring that which clearly contradicts said claims of ruins and their historical account as a whole proves beyond doubt they are partaking in a ruse. Yet I digress. For as initially mentioned, growing evidence worldwide is disproving currently mainstream held opinions with our next subject of interest symbolically making academia fall on their own sword. Their own dating of these unexplained sites made before they were discovered elsewhere. Upon in-depth study, or indeed past knowledge of similar anomalies, one can link proof that sites on separate continents and hemispheres of each other are identical in form. A self-inflicted faux pas, exposure of academics' inability to accurately date sites, or indeed mankind. The keyhole graves, a mass of which has recently been found along an ancient road within Saudi Arabia. Yet amazingly, when we covered these graves before, it wasn't another continent these were found on, predating oceanic travel, but one identical in shape, possibly on Mars. Found throughout Asia and notoriously forbidden to be entered, now however, the Saudis seem keen to investigate so that their inhabitants may soon be exposed. Could this be a mass grave of ancient aliens? Once buried in this unusual style, one we also believe could possibly be resting upon the Martian surface, we find such possibility hugely fascinating. We recently covered the enigmatic megalith known as the White Rock of Vilcambaba within Peru, showing how this rock was in fact abandoned, abandoned midway through being harvested of blocks to be used in the nearby polygonal masonry with many other sites, many still strewn with blocks cut with a natural appearing face, but a right-angled interlocking body. Yet upon the white rock still remained other mysterious patterns, such as that of the 90-degree steps cut into the stone. We have identified this kind of stone cutting previously, such as at Machu Picchu, clearly used to help construct the polygonal walls themselves, but also at other, until now unexplained, unfinished stones many found throughout Peru. Nalpa Iglesia, for example, found just outside the astonishing ancient ruins of Olente Tambo, a mysterious megalith that many, including us, previously presumed was possibly some elaborate, deliberate carving 
a throne, or possibly, like the false door, meters away, an ancient portal of some form. However, when one approaches said rock with the same eye as that of the white rock, one quickly finds matching stonework, finished and installed as that of the water fountain found within Olente Tambo itself, thus further supporting our hypothesis of these types of stone cuts and indeed step patterning found upon them is indicative of unfinished, abruptly abandoned stonework, many left unliberated or strewn among their ancient quarries. As with the many other discoveries made, once one begins to perceive unexplained artifacts of this nature in the correct way, they suddenly make sense, and the supportive evidence simply flows from the hidden into plain sight. How this, or possibly another clearly advanced yet once Stone Age civilization, made the cut marks into the solid pink Aswan granite found upon the unfinished obelisk among many other megalithic blocks found within the Aswan quarry within Egypt, however, is yet another mystery yet to be unraveled. But by identifying and distinguishing between what were enormous megalithic block quarries and what were those of the baffling polygonal blocks is, we believe, the correct path to take if one wishes to unravel the mystery of just how this lost civilization operated, what they were constructing, and hopefully explain who they were and indeed where we came from. It is a pursuit which we find highly compelling. We have in the past covered the remarkable legends and, in particular, the intriguing enormous tombs which cover the Mediterranean island of Sardinia, long claimed as the resting places of some 800 or so ancient giants who once belonged to a now lost race of beings. It is undeniable that the scale of these inner chambers is of considerable size, most capable of housing remains of a size of 15 feet or more in height. There are, undeniably, many compelling pieces of written reports, and indeed photographic evidence of the discovery of ancient giant remains. Yet nearly all seemingly vanish into thin air, many shortly following the mention of the involvement of certain academic institutions, such as the claim 3,000 or so remains claimed to have been excavated by Ralph Glidden on Santa Catalina Island, located within the Channel Islands during the early 20th century, all of which now lost. However, like the many ancient Uparts we share, there are that rare few which have fortunately made their way into the hands of private collectors or individuals lacking any agenda but that of revealing the truth of these objects' existence. And one such scenario involves that of a Luigi Muscus, a man who actually owns farmland on the island of Sardinia, upon which he claims to have found gigantic molars of a hominid appearance. In tandem with her appearance on the program Coast to Coast AM in the US, Paola Harris shared his extraordinary photos. After looking into the artifacts ourselves, we have indeed found an argument which will undoubtedly be used to dismiss the finds as that of ancient cave bear teeth. Yet the root patterning, and indeed crown of the molar, like that of the partial jaw also shared, seem to us to be more reminiscent of giant human skulls rather than the patterning of prehistoric bears. What's more, it must not be ignored that surrounding the claimed discovery site are indeed the aforementioned and gigantic ruins and the legends of individuals large enough to have once housed such teeth in their mouths, which all persist on the island to this day. What do you think? An ancient giant's molar and lower jaw? Or simply that of the remains of a prehistoric animal? It is a legend, and indeed series of discoveries, which we find highly compelling.